Okay, looks like we're going. The count the counter is working, so I guess we're uh, we're functional. Let me bring up my uh, software so I can see, make sure I'm watching everything. Well, good evening and uh, welcome to uh, another uh, Photoshop show. This is the one that we missed last week because I didn't have images ready. I'm sorry, I got so crunched I couldn't get anything prepared. But uh, as it turned out, you're actually kind of in luck because we're going to um, we're going to go with even better things than we uh, than I originally planned because uh, one thing that has often brought up, been brought up to me is the whole issue of non-destructive editing. And so I'm going to give a quick review of what's meant by non-destructive editing first, and then we'll jump into a couple of kind of cool techniques uh, with making masks. And mask is a big part of non-destructive editing, which is one reason why I making this a feature of these uh, these shows so um, but for starters let's just talk about uh, the non-destructive editing idea there's a whole lot of things you can do in Photoshop that um, once you've committed the change it's permanent and once you save the file and you can't open the file up again and uh, reverse the change or, or you know undo what you did so if the following day you discover that you'd sharpened it way too much more than you would expect intended to or you went and resized that thing and now uh, you can't recover because you didn't work on a copy um, or you uh, you you erased stuff. It's the worst case. <laughs> you use that eraser tool that I wish they would remove from the entire program. Uh, or you apply to global changes using the adjustments uh, like the uh, hue saturation or the curves or any of the other levels control. The, uh, the shadow highlight control. And by the way, we're using a copy of CS2 so that you can kind of, this is backwards compatible to a lot of people's copies of Photoshop that uh, have been working for them for years and they haven't felt the need to upgrade. Now mind you, CS, ha as they keep advancing, they keep adding more and more features and many of the things that we kind of, uh, that I'll be showing you how to do back in the old days on CS2, they found even faster solutions for it. One of them is masking, especially masking like difficult to mask subjects like hair. Uh, with CS5, I believe, there's some great changes. And I'll include some links to videos that you can watch to see how those uh, more recent versions work. So, uh, in the meantime, though, let's get this done. And by the way, this is being recorded uh, this week in 1080p. So if you can watch it in full screen at 1080p, you should be able to see nice, crisp screens. I was frustrated with how the 720 screens were looking. And uh, I didn't put in the zooming software, so I probably should. But, uh, meh, next week. I think we'll live without it. So if you can view it in 1080p, that'd be great. Okay, so let me uh, close out the camera and uh, get get on to some non-destructive editing. Now here I got a picture open here, and of course here's. Uh, in fact, let me go ahead and bring up my zoom it tool. And, oh, I don't have it installed. Okay, forget that. Um, so here's my picture here, and. Uh, it's got a nice clean edge and you would say, oh, you know, why not just select this using the lasso tool? Well, we'll I'll show you some tricks with the magnetic lasso later on. But, um, but in the meantime, let's just discuss this eraser tool. Okay, so here's an eraser. And I can go ahead and make it bigger. And I'm trying to erase stuff and just get rid of it, right? right? I'm just going to erase stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is insane because now, how can you ever go back? You make a mistake or you find you erase too much, you can never go back. Um, this is the very thing that masks are best at, is punching holes where you want to punch holes, uh, revealing where you want to reveal and hiding what you want to hide. And that's the word mask, because it, like the uh, holes in the mask, reveal the eyes, and the rest of the mask uh, hides the face, okay? Conceals the face. So, uh, and the way it works is that whatever is white will conceal and whatever is black will reveal, okay, um, on the mask. But I'm moving ahead of myself. So here we have a picture, 
and it needs some sharpening and uh, so we'll also I'll show you a, a way of doing sharpening without um, damaging the picture uh, of course you could just make a copy and that's one of the first steps in doing non-destructive editing is you simply make a copy and you do that by dragging it down to the little page thing um, or you can do a control J does the same thing it uh, control J will make a copy of whatever layer you've got selected okay or you can just drag it down to a little blank piece of paper and it'll make a copy so in that case I could go ahead and say I was going to do a sharpening thing and I could go ahead and sharpen using arm chart mask and oh my gosh that's sharpening the heck out of it isn't it look at that that's quite a bit of radius and quite a bit of that's a lot that's maybe that's definitely too much okay I pulled it back a little bit I'm trying to yeah the radius is way too high here let's pull back the radius I'll keep the amount up and preview back and forth yeah uh -huh. Oh, well, it's far, far better. Okay, so, however, I'm uh, showing some white halos around here and a little bit of darkening halos. I'm not too crazy about it. Let me move that, lower that radius again and uh, hit it pretty hard there with that radius. Maybe my threshold's too high, really. Okay, well, that's a lot of sharpening. Here we go. So that's before and that's after so we got some sharpening going on but still this is not the ideal sharpening i could do but the fact that i worked on a copy i can overkill and then use the opacity to pull it back and i can dial it back by adjusting the opacity over here on the right so i can take it anywhere in between the amounts now even more than that i can do a really cool trick using blending modes and that's those these modes up here if I switch this layer so that it's in darken mode, see what happens? A lot of those light highlights disappear, uh, the overshoot of the highlights. So now I'll go ahead and do Control J or make a copy in other words. And this time I'll change this to lighten. And now I get back the bright highlights and I can decide whether it's too bright. And yeah, it is kind of kind of bright in here and in here this is too light so I'm going to pull back just the highlights now this is allowing me to do something that's very similar to what you used to be able to do on the old drum scanners where you had separate control over the light and dark part of the sharpening in nature shots I can get away with the high numbers like this a 74 but uh, typically in interior shots and anything involving man-made objects you would probably pull this uh, lighten one all the way back to um, oh 27 or so so uh, so again that's what I did I have this channel at darken and this channel at lighten and what it's doing is it's letting you giving you separate control over the uh, lighter halo that it puts around and the darker halo that it puts around the image okay and uh, I'll just hold down the alt key and click on this eyeball here and you'll see a before and after so there you have before and after in fact it tells you I think I'll pull back that dark just a little bit because it seems to be uh, there we go that's something I tried to fix in the by making the radius lower but I noticed I still was getting a bit of a dark too much darkness there the way sharpening works by the way is it create increases the contrast by adding a light halo on one side of the edge and a darker halo on the other side of the edge and the eye perceives that as increased contrast that technique actually was even used in uh, medieval paintings late medieval paintings you saw this technique being used uh, where they would put a bit of lighter paint on one side of like a finger or a, a robe or a place that they wanted to bring out of the painting a hand and they put a, the darker on the other side so it's the same idea it's a trick to the eye it doesn't actually sharpen anything it's just fooling your eye to make it appear sharper okay so now I've just shown you a non-destructive editing technique for doing sharpening okay and so again there's before I mean uh, holding on the wrong key there's there's after and there's before so the uh, the before actually looks downright out of focus doesn't it it probably was out of focus I was using a macro mode and the 
the range of focus is so slight that I practically always have to fix it somehow. All right, so now you know one dis non-destructive way of doing sharpening. In fact, I not only took it where you made a second layer and sharpened that layer and could adjust the opacity and the mix, which allows you to kind of over sharpen and then dial it back. But I also showed you how to separate the light halo from the dark halo and, uh, and make them separately adjustable, which is one of the coolest tricks, I think, in the whole uh, Photoshop tricks arsenal because sharpening is so much part of what we do all the time. You practically always need to sharpen there's oh, so many types of pictures you need to sharpen. All right, so um, now so let's move on to masks. You've seen that now. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and go up here to image and see this? Duplicate. I'm going to say duplicate and call it copy. And look at that. Duplicate makes a perfect copy of what you had. So now you can save this copy and you can be working on a second copy for other things. For instance, I'm going to go ahead and flatten this copy. So just right click on here and say flatten image and it takes my sharpened copy and flattens it all. Okay? And makes it so it's savable as a JPEG now and everything like that. So now I could save that as a JPEG and away I go. Okay? Pretty cool, huh? Alright, so let's get out of here. I'm not going to save it, but I just wanted to show you how you could make a duplicate, flatten that, save it as a JPEG, and all that kind of stuff, or do other moves with it. Like now, I've got a flattened version of this. I can copy this on top of the original. For instance, I can select all and hit C Control C to copy it, and then take and paste this on top of this one, and uh, I could revert this, in fact. Let's go ahead to revert. This loads in the original. And now just down to my original, I can control V to paste it in. And now I have my sharpened flattened layer on top that could have been like overkill or too much. And, uh, and I can dial it back if it's too much. I can also do other things to this layer, so which is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and do a hue saturation move to it. Now, you may be saying, oh, great, now you've shown me how to work on layers. Keep copying layers and copying layers and always do your moves on there. Like from here under image, you have these all these adjustments. And you can do all of these adjustments to a layer that you've added instead of doing it to the original, you see. And then you can overkill a little bit and dial it back so it's not as, uh, as serious. Um, here we go, let me get rid of this. I'll probably come back to duplicating again in a bit. But another thing you can do is a thing called adjustment layers. Many of the tools that you see in the image adjustments region, not shadow highlight though, but many of the tools are available as adjustment layers from this down here that looks like, in this version, looks like a little black and white thing. And you see, all of these are the same things. You have your levels, control, your curves, color balance, brightness, contrast, which I recommend not using uh, very often, especially never apply it directly to an image that isn't a copy, because if you push up the brightness too much, it, it'll it amp out the pixels, um, putting them all at 255 that are the bright ones, and then you can never get those back. You can never lower it and get the pixels that you'd push to 255, which is pure white, back again. Also, if you darken it too much, uh, the same thing happens, that it pushes pixels off the edge, you can never get them back. So I always say use the curves, control, or levels. But uh, hue saturation also is in here, a selective color, channel mixer. Very, very, very powerful tools. You even have invert, threshold, and posterize. I'm going to use this on a hue saturation, not that I need any kind of saturation on this picture, but I thought you'd like to see. And I'm using it on this layer. And I'm going to actually pull back some of the saturation on this picture, just for the heck of it, so you see what I'm doing. Okay, so pulling back the saturation, okay, and so now I have this, and it's applied to, to uh, all of these layers. If I hold down the Alt key and hover between two, you can see I can make it so that it indents a little bit, and now it's only applied to the layer that's under it. Okay? What's more, the opacity trick works on this too, in that if I 
dulled it too much, if I pulled back that saturation too much, I can dial back the amount of the effect that, uh, that I've applied in here. Of course, I, and that's just a fast way to do it. I can also just double click this and, and bring back up the, uh, the tool. There we go. You have to double click on it. In this version, you have to double click the little icon. If you double click the layer, it lets you rename the layer and change its blending modes and all this other stuff. Um, but anyway, I could also go in here and just change the setting in here. But you see, the fact that I could simply dial it back with opacity is really cool. And again, this is completely non-destructive. I can come back in and change this anytime and go crazy and overamp it and pull it back again and still never have touched any of my actual original layers to where I'm damaging anything. Okay? All right, so let's get to uh, the erasing the erasing issue. Now say uh, I felt like this with the saturation was working great for the darker parts of the picture, but it, was, it wasn't working so great on the lighter parts of the issue and so uh, of the picture. And so I went ahead and I said, okay, well, look at the middle looks fine in here, so I need to punch a hole in this image up top. So I come in with my little eraser and I start erasing parts of this picture that's the upper picture, right? And yeah, it's, it works, doesn't it? Look at that, it works. See, it's revealing the image that's underneath. Maybe I don't have this radical enough to really, really point this out, but as you can see, in fact, let's go ahead, right ahead. <laughs> and there you can see that I've really pushed it. So now you can see uh, that by me coming in here and, oops, and erasing away, I'm, uh, I'm making it so you can see the unsaturated version underneath. Well, that's, that's nice, but not super useful, really. Um, <laughs> let's do a Control-Alt-Z a few times till I've undone this damage or not. Okay, there we go. Uh, make sure I'm... Yeah, okay, I'm back to the original. Okay, so better a better thing to do is, you see this white space in here? This white space is a mask, and every single one of these adjustment layers that you make from here comes with a mask already built in. And the way the mask works is that... Oh, I don't want to do that. The way the mask works is that you see it's it's white right now it's letting everything pass let's go ahead and paint with some black on here make my brush bigger and um, oh, I have it oh I'm in overlay mode make sure you're in normal mode for your brush to start and here I'm painting in black and that's changing the amount of hue saturation for this region. So I'm not saturating this part. Okay, so I'm selectively picking where I'm going to saturate instead of punching holes. And using a nice fuzzy, nice super hardness turned all the way down, nice fuzzy brush, makes it so that the edges are nice and feathered and you don't see where I've been, uh, been doing this. You can then, Hold down the Alt key and click on it, and you can see where you where you painted, and you can fill in gaps. You can hit the X key and switch to white. Now, mind you, I hit the D and hit D for default here, and uh, so now the X key switches between black and white, and I can remove sections and, and actually see what I'm doing, and then simply Alt click again on this, and so I'm what I'm doing is I'm actually seeing the mask that I've created, okay? So, uh, so there we have it. I'm in white, and I'm putting back that saturation in here. Okay, so then hit X, and now I'm taking away that saturation in there. And now I'm having a direct effect on this tool, okay? On the, on the hue saturation tool. So I can say, oh boy, look at this. See, these bright parts were way too saturated, so I'm just pulling back their saturation. And uh, I didn't want to do that. There we go. All right, so that's, again, let's do a before and after. 
hold down the alt key and click on the eyeball and it shows you before and after but I can also simply turn this on and off and I can see see what parts are glowing now are just around the edges and I've gotten rid of most of the uh, hue saturation that was in the middle all right so that's pretty cool that's so now you're getting the idea some of the basics behind the mask last week I showed or last time last session I showed you how to do a luminosity mask and a luminosity mask is something that would probably work really nicely in this situation for uh, making it so that only the darker parts got saturated remember I showed you that and uh, and the lighter parts weren't or vice versa where you only want the lighter parts saturated and the darker parts not to be saturated uh, so refer to that one if you want to see how to get the uh, luminosity mask in uh, into something. Again, it was you just pick that, control click. So just selecting the luminosity, and uh, and then you would um, turn that into an image, some image content. Okay. So um, or use that as a selection that you uh, you turn to uh, you filled with black. So anyway let's now move on to making selections so we've we've gotten some of the ideas behind non-destructive editing working on layers working on duplicates and er instead of erasing from an image content erasing from a mask uh, similarly I can erase from this image content by adding a mask and you do that with this down here in the lower right is this little one that looks like a circle inside of a rectangle and see that adds one of those masks and now I can paint with my paintbrush tool and look at that it looks as if I'm erasing but I'm not I'm simply creating a mask I'm simply making it so that wherever there's black it sees through the layer to what's underneath and since I have nothing underneath you're seeing transparency so you get that so wherever it's black Imagine that's that little dark hole, the little keyhole that you look through and you to see what's on the other side. It's the, the black keyhole. So wherever it's black, that's the keyhole. You're making a keyhole for someone to look through to see what's underneath. And what's underneath is whatever the, uh, whatever the layer is below it. So this acted just like an eraser, but it didn't erase a thing. And I can always hit the X key, switch to white, and put it right back again. Okay? and I can put it back very selectively okay so what do you think of that okay hopefully you got that idea and it sounds pretty darn uh, pretty attractive okay so now let's talk about some selection techniques I'm going to go ahead and click on this and remove the layer mask which is a delete layer mask and uh, that returns everything back to normal again now in making selections um, since this has a nice hard edge a lot of people would think just pull out the old magnetic lasso and that's underneath the regular lasso and you have the magnetic lasso tool and it lets you drag around and it does a pretty good job actually of sensing where the edges are and really kind of pouring around there but look I got this big middle part I gotta somehow get around how am I gonna get around that well tell the truth magnetic lasso is so good that it will let you actually get way inside of there and you can fix it with a brush later perhaps or something but uh, and when, when you if you make a mistake you simply delete nodes by hitting the delete key and just keep on flowing in there and you can click and start again so you can click on a spot and keep going and uh, it's going to follow this and See, I'm not quite getting that little leaf up there. It's saying I can adjust my threshold so that it's even more picky. So there you have. I'm just going to go ahead and really, really quickly. You see how fast you can move with this darn tool, and, and it's pretty accurate. Oops. There we go. Uh -huh. And I'll just try to make a quick selection. Okay. Well, anyway, you see how long this is taking, and. I'm actually doing this as a touchpad, so I'm a total superhero here. I, I've got my Wacom tablet, and I just <laughs> didn't feel like picking it up. There we are. So if I can do this with a touchpad, you know, and actually get a selection going, I don't know. I feel pretty, 
heroic. All right, here we are. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Slow down. This thing, you watch Photoshop tutorials. You either got to be patient or hope that the guy will edit them, which I never edit, so you're out of luck. Here we are. Yes. Switch directions. So I clicked so it was switch directions. And double click to get rid of it. Okay, so there we have it. A little extra node there. So now you say, okay, so what are you going to do with that, Terry? What are you going to do with that? I'm going to turn that into a mask. If I've made a selection and I, uh, I have to add to this one second, let's uh, just go here and wrap around. Oops, I want to subtract. One sec. Um, Alt, there we go. I'm subtracting from the selection in this case. Here we are. I want to subtract from this too. No. Now I'm holding down the Alt key and trying to get it to. There we go. Double click. There we go. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so Shift lets you add to a selection and Alt lets you subtract from a selection with any of these selection tools. All right, so now if I make a, remember I made a, uh, a mask by clicking on this thing? If I have a selection in place, look at what happens. Just click Alt, click on that. You see, it turned my magnetic lasso selection into a mask. And whatever's black, you see through to the layer below. And since there's nothing below, we see transparency. And you might go, oh my gosh, that's amazing. It's such an incredible mask. Well, it's, it's okay. It's not that great. You can make it a little bit better by, um, I don't know, you can, there's, a, there's one, one nice trick. There's a special uh, filter under the other, uh, minimize, minimize, minimum. And uh, you can adjust how much it's going to shrink the, uh, the mask. And I usually shrink it a little bit, two, maybe three pixels. And then I come in and I use the blur filter, uh, the Gaussian blur, in fact. And I add two and a half to three. And if you got that selected, by the way, you can use the up and down arrows to count. And I blur, I blur out the mask a little bit and it makes the edges more believable when you put it on a background, okay? So it doesn't look as sharp and kind of man-made. And uh, so anyway, um, by the way, holding the shift key down and clicking on the mask will turn it off and turn it back on again so that you can kind of compare your, your mask and see if you got everything. All right, so, so yeah, that's, that's kind of impressive. And I could like now put this in another background here. Let's go and I'll open some other background. Probably not a very good one. Let's see. What do I have in here? Oh, I got some grass. Let's open up some grass. And I'll select all of this. Control A and Control C for copy. And I don't need that anymore. And I'll just uh, Control A and Control V. Oops, I paste it inside the mask. Undo. Make a new layer. There we go. Okay. Oh darn, I still have that selection active. One second. This is one thing that really drives me crazy sometimes. Well, most of the time. I gotta take Alt click this. There we go. All right, now let's see. Good, good. Now let's drag it down so it's under. And now I've got my flower on top of something that's a background. All righty. Well, I didn't think I was going to get out of that one. And uh, and now, of course, you could uh, add portions of the original. But you notice I've left my background, my original, still sitting down here. In case I got a, I needed to come to the rescue for any purpose, I've got it there to come to the rescue for me. Okay? Uh, so it's useful. You can find all kinds of uses. All right, so now you've seen, though, that a selection became a mask. And without erasing anything, it punched a hole through so let me see the layer underneath. Okay? So that's the whole idea of this mask. It's really, really cool. All right? It's incredibly cool. Um, but how about another way of making the same kind of selection? All right? Well, let's see. I'm going to select this, and I'm going to control J and make a copy. I'm going to turn this one off. And uh, I'm going to... I'll move my little highlight down here and Alt 
Maybe you hold down the alt and this little thing looks like a movie camera shows up and lets you apply it just to that uh, that layer and get this thing down here. Okay, great. Now I've got this this turned off. Oh, this belongs up here. Sorry. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. What am I doing? I confused myself. Okay, let's try to make a better uh, another selection using a different kind of an approach. And this time I'm going to, instead of using the magnetic lasso, I'm going to use the polygonal lasso tool. And I say, what I mean? That's the crudest tool in the whole arsenal. Well, watch this. I'm going to click, and I'm just sort of click close, as close as I can, and get kind of close. Okay, so bear with me, bear with me. And whoops, undo. No oh, drat. I went and double click. That's the problem of using a touchpad. It's... <laughs> Shouldn't have been using the clicker. I am so used to my touchpad now, it's unbelievable. I had to switch to touchpad because I was getting, after years of doing all this, I got that old carpal tunnel issues. So many of my compatriots have gotten it. And uh, I tell you, the touchpad has changed my life and made it, made it so I can use these tools again. All right, so I'm not even going to try to get those leaves. Uh, here we go. I really, could be, I really could be a lot cruder than I'm being. Yeah, but this is the whole idea. In fact, this may not be the ideal image to show this trick, but I want you to see this trick because it's a really cool trick and a great way to, to do things. Now, mind you, they've got better tricks now in like CS5 with the find edges tool and all these different things. And let me go ahead and uh, hold down the shift and... I'm going to add to this. There we go. All right, so now I have it sort of selected. You see where I have some space around here. And you say, well, a lot of good that is doing you. Well, now I get out the magic wand tool. And we're going to we're going to do a little little trick. Oops. We're going to do a little trick holding down row. Oh gosh, I hope I can get that. There we go. All right. Hold down the Alt key. And I held down the Alt key and, and clicked inside the space. And what it does is it creates a really super accurate, way beyond your usual magic wand tool capability, a really, really good selection. And I see I've got I to turn contiguous on here. Actually, it's nice that I didn't have contiguous on because look, it got down in here where I needed to get. But again, I, it's uh, making a real, real good one here. Uh, didn't expect that to be too good. Now I just held shift down and redid it, and you see it jumped out to the edge. Oops, that's too much. Remember, control, uh, control Z is your friend. So shift adds and alt subtracts so that's what I'm using I'm using alt to subtract from the selection and that's too much so shift and shift again there we go now you like that in fact I probably want to get some of this out here whoops that's too much now I can fiddle with the tolerance and get back quite a bit now so there I've got a really tight selection and I did it with the magic wand. It was far easier than using a mag the uh, magnetic lasso. And um, again, I, and you can adjust the tolerance up here. So if it's selecting too much, you can just drop that number down and see if it's there. See, now it's being a lot more friendly. It's picking the edge of that. And then you, I usually go up and I get my uh, regular, regular lasso tool. And again, do the old shift Oops, whoa, I didn't have shift held down. There we are. And uh, this now I got shift held down. 
and I'm just selecting out the parts that I didn't want selected. See, I don't really need that little thing selected. And I don't need that selected, so I get rid of that. Oops, sorry, it's an alt. So hold alt to get rid of that. Although you like here, you're complaining. Yeah, that's part of the flower included. Okay, stop picking on me here. So now we got a pretty good uh, selection. Actually, a, a darn good selection. So let's go ahead and turn it into a mask you know, by clicking down here. And boom, there you have it. So you might be saying, okay, well, Terry, that's really pretty amazing. You know, it's really great. Which, What's the difference? Huh? Well, that's the difference. See, it's my magnetic. Above, now you're seeing my magnetic lasso. And I'll go ahead and drag this up here so it affects everything. So there's the original magnetic lasso version. And uh, here's selecting more. So I just kind of back and forth. The magnetic lasso tool got some things that I didn't get with the other because of my tolerance. But look at how much deeper I got into here with ease. That would have been a real pain to get in any other way with magnetic lasso or anything else. All right, and uh, so that little trick of using the polygonal lasso, uh, lasso tool, the crudest of the selection tools, but yet using that in conjunction with alt clicking on the magic wand tool so that it's re so, so it removes from the selection and playing with that tolerance setting lets me make really, really sharp masks. Okay, really nice ones. Okay, so, uh, so what can I say? So there's the, uh, oh, that's the magnetic lasso, left a lot of stuff around, whereas this one didn't. It, it really got in and revealed right through, showed all this space in here. Now mind you, it's a mask, so if you decide you don't want to see all of this down through here and be seeing through, if you feel it's distracting, well heck, it's a mask. Just click on the uh, mask part. See, you're on the image part now, so if I painted on that, I would be painting black on the image. But click on this, and we're going to stop seeing through, we're getting rid of the keyhole by painting white. So let me go ahead and hit the B key, and just paint in there. And there you go. Now I'm not seeing through as much. In fact, I think that whole thing is distracting, don't you? There you go. All righty. Then I fixed it. And... It's, uh, I could have done that to a copy too. Okay, I could have said, you know what? That's too much, but let's not just destroy all the work I did. Let's go ahead and make a copy and turn off the other one and click on this. And now I'll go ahead and I'll mess with the mask. That's why I'm on a copy mask. And I still got the, uh, the other one there in case I want to decide I'm going to go back. That's non-destructive editing. The more you can do it, remember Control J makes a copy. And uh, there's a lot of great, great um, things for combining selected and linked layers and all that kind of stuff. Control E, Control Shift E. Oh, anyway, we won't get into that. That's kind of, down the road. Okay, so I was going to show you how to do a... Uh, a technique using the um, using a brush and to select hair with but I found a video that was so much better and faster than anything I could present you that I'm just going to include that video that, that link to that video in the show notes and it's a great little video and it shows you exactly what I was going to show you and does it with some actual curly hair um, in a good way and um, oh it does it it's a woman wearing a taffeta uh, you know, a gauzy outfit, and she's got feathers on her head and everything, a very difficult type of thing to, to select. And he does do a kind of quick job. He could have done even better with the feathers, and the modern tools would have done a little bit better even job with the feathers, possibly, the, with the, the, find it, the new Detect Edges types of features. I think started with CS5. But, uh, but nonetheless, if you need to see how to do uh, really complex selection using the overlay brush tool, then then that's your uh, your video to watch. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and make another copy of this and bring it up above here and make it visible. Okay, and I'm just going to give you a quick, 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 quick look at uh, 
at some of what's going on with that um, that technique. Oh, or should I? Should I just leave it alone? I think I'll let you watch what. Well, this is so tempting to just show you this technique. Uh, all right, I'll show you some of the technique. All right, so first we need a black and white. We need a black and white mask. So I'm going to go ahead and make get some black and white imagery by clicking on this thing. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a mask. And it's just created a mask out of the selection. There you go, black and white. Okay. And uh, let me make another copy of this because I'm really... Um, well, no, I won't. I'll just go ahead and leave that. Now what we want to do... Yeah, okay. What we want to do is we want to make it so that wherever in this mask is is pure white so that we just see this we don't see through the mask to the layer underneath and we want to make everything out here be as black as possible okay so one way to do this is to go ahead into the mask and start increasing its you know actually use a um, adjustment layer like curves and increase its contrast first. That's the first step. So look at that. Right away, I get into where I'm getting white, where I want just the parts that I want white are white. Okay, light as possible. So I'm going to get that as light as possible, the parts that I want, which is, in other words, gray, at least gray. Now this is going to give me a little bit of a problem back here, and uh, that's back here. So let me just see if I can't make that a little bit darker uh, it's a little bit this is a toughy all right so that part I may have to do another technique but the idea is to get everything as black and white as possible uh, right from the get-go so that I have virtually black and white where the image I want is already pretty much a done deal okay now I'm going to come in and paint around the edges so let's go ahead and make this click on here so it's default or hit the, the D key of course and uh, and get out a brush and uh, so first let's go ahead and you know we're going to paint inside of here we're going to get this all white and get it all as white as possible wherever we remember we're, this is where we want to be seeing through to the background and uh, I'm going to try to get this flower whoops Oh, drat. I had my brush so fuzzy that it bled out to the outside. Okay, so this is the idea. So you're getting a, this is really going to be quick. The other, the other video I'm going to sh share with you shows a lot faster. I just wanted you to see very quickly. This is not so formidable. Plus, in his video, he actually uses a technique, a tool, a, an adjustment layer that's not available in uh, CS2. So I'll go ahead with that and go in here. I know I want all of this. I don't want to see through any of that. And get some of this down here. I'm going to still have to do some manual selection. Okay, so now I want to get these edges a little bit better. So I'll come in and hit this and set it to overlay. And now I can paint on this edge and it's going to it's going to lighten whatever is near the edge that's not in the grays, okay? So it's it's a great way of, now that I've gotten near the edge done, and then you hit the X to switch to black, and you darken the edge on the other side. And I want to get rid of this, so I'm going to just click, click, click. Okay, and uh, I can paint it out later, but I just figured I'd do it that way. Um, getting rid of this. I don't want to get rid of all of it, remember? We're going to try to salvage some of that. Hit X and switch. And keep going. And it'll go out to the edge. Here we are. And make my brush a little smaller to be able to get in this hole. By the way, it's the, the uh, bracket keys, the left and right, the open and close bracket, not paren, but bracket keys that do that little trick. Okay, hit X, get rid of this, up to the edge. Here we are, and I don't need this. So, now mind you, I'm using this at full strength. If I was doing this uh, on hair or something, I would 
mess with my opacity like crazy. I had to keep my opacity down around 27 or so, or even less, and be doing this in little, little short doses. But I'm just doing this real quick right now so you can see how it's done. So let's get that edge and switch to black and get that edge harder. And right down through there. This edge, there we go. And switch X again. I want that edge. I want that to be whiter. Right now blacker. Yeah, righty. And I guess like that. And whiter. And blacker. Trying to get a nice hard edge. Okay, it's similar rules that you saw before. And get rid of all this stuff. Remember, the more times you click, you just keep clicking, and it starts to, it gets rid of things that are close in value. And, uh, okay, so now I can get rid of the overlay mode and just paint out the rest. There we are. All right. So now, remember, uh, I'm painting on this thing just as if it's image content, because masks are image content. They're selections that have been turned into image content. And actually, the way Photoshop works internally, there's really no difference to it between a selection and image content at any time. So there you go. All right, so that's crude. Oh, it's, I think I, well. All right, so now I go ahead, and now it's the time to hit Alt and, and Show. Okay? So there I have my selection. And again, I can come in and I can say, oh, I don't like the way I'm seeing stuff through here. And I can just paint on the mask in white. So change to white and just paint on the mask, get rid of that. And, uh, but see, I've made a selection by painting on the image content using, the, using a high contrast mask that I created, that I pasted in from, remember, I, all I did was I control clicked on the RGB and that gave me a, Grayscale selection, and I came back here, and I created, remember I had a selection already, and then I created the mask, and it makes the mask out of the selection. Selection is a mask, a mask is a selection. So it creates the mask out of the selection I had created by control clicking on that channel. So got it, so I control clicked on that. It made a selection of the gray content we saw in the last session, like a, sort of like a black and white photo. And uh, then when I made the mask, it converted that selection of the grayscale content into this. We came in to speed matters along. We used the image adjustments layer and the curves. And we increased the curve of that like mad, increasing its contrast by making the curve steeper. Remember, the steeper the curve, the more the contrast. And uh, then we went ahead and just painted white where we wanted white where it was easy, painted black where it was easy to paint black, and then used the overlay mode of the brush with it nice and fuzzy. And, uh, and right here, the overlay mode. And we switched between black and white by hitting the X key and just switching back and forth and doing that. Then I really should have taken off the fuzzies and gotten rid of the fuzzy brush and turned, changed the hardness to full 100% harden and go ahead and paint out the other parts that you just know you don't want to get. The reason you do that is because you can't always tell how darn fuzzy you've made the brush and it's easy to brush into parts that you didn't intend to and you don't always catch it in time uh, to do an undo. You don't notice that you made that mistake till sometime later. All right, so I gave you the quick overview of how that's going to work and I hope that thing was real interesting and helpful and showed you the uh, the basics of of how to use an overlay brush a brush in overlay mode in order to make a really um, whoops there we go uh, a pa brush in overlay mode in order to make a really really good selection Okay, now I noticed I got a few dropouts today, and so if there's some sections that disappeared and made the whole discussion uh, unintelligible, I'm sorry, uh, but this was an experiment to see if I could get the 1080p to work, and it looks like it mostly worked. So uh, anyway, so there you have it. That's tonight's show, and uh, looks like we went almost an hour, and uh, which is longer than I usually try to keep make these shows, but since, what the heck, you got a few bonuses tonight. 
And remember the non-destructive editing thing, review that, review what I did. Whenever you're about to do something that would make a permanent change to a layer or to any image content, think about that. What can I, what can I do to avoid doing that? Can I make a copy? Can I duplicate the layer? Uh, and things like that. In fact, let me go ahead and one thing, one nice feature of duplicating layers is you notice I've got all these darn layers over here. And uh, so if I, I can make a go up here to image, duplicate, and look what's right here duplicate merged layers only. This is a great way of making a quick copy that you already has all these darn changes you made merged together. And it creates a copy and with just one layer, but with all the layers that you had merged together. And that's really useful when you want to just make a change to that one layer. And you can copy and paste it back into the, uh, the other layer that you're working on. Okay, so uh, there we go. So then you could p make your changes, paste it in here as a layer, and cut back the opacity so the changes aren't as extreme, stuff like that. There's a bunch of different uses for these types of things, for using duplicates. And uh, it's Control J to make a copy of a layer. And, uh, and what can I say? I think I've given you quite enough to keep your brain going for, uh, for a couple of minutes at least, playing around in your Photoshop. And uh, so if you have any kind of questions, go ahead and post them to the, uh, to the comments in the video. Or if you're watching this on, if you're watching this, uh, yeah, post your questions in the comments at YouTube. Or if you're watching Google Plus, uh, post your comments there. Uh, either way, it's good. Uh, I still see the comments on YouTube and they, I get an email notification. So I usually can respond pretty darn quickly. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed it and I wasn't too long-winded and, and have a good time playing around with your Photoshop. Good night.